in our health cast today. We all know the importance of wearing sunscreen to protect our skin against damage and cancer. And now the FDA is taking steps to make sure the product you buy has a sufficient amount of UVA protection. A recent order by the agency is intended to make it easier for all of us to identify key product information for both its safety and its effectiveness. Essentially, there's a few points that have changed. The first is that they want the highest SPF that will be marketed to be an SPF of 60. The second is formulations will be allowed to be created up to an SPF of 80, but that'll be the top cutoff. The third main change is that for an SPF of 15 or higher, they're requiring manufacturers to include sun filters that allow that agent to be considered broad spectrum. And that's dermatologist Dr. Jeffrey Fromowitz saying that titanium dioxide and zinc oxide continue to be considered the most safe and protective sunscreen ingredients. Those are the ones to look for. PABA and trolamine salicylate are no longer going to be allowed in sunscreen and the FDA is not permitting combination products like insect repellent with sunscreen. The FDA is still collecting data on chemical ingredients used in sunscreen as well, which have been banned in some areas over concerns about its environmental impact. And a randomized study by researchers at Duke University of Medicine in Durham, North Carolina, they found that supervised lifestyle changes, including simple diet and exercise, can really reduce blood pressure in people who have resistant hypertension. The study published in the journal Circulation found people who were monitored closely by a team of health professionals in a cardiac rehabilitation setting saw the most improvement. Why is it important? Well, the findings are considered an important first step toward larger and longer studies about the impact of your lifestyle on your blood pressure.